culture is actually being good. We've got a light that was quite possibly one of the most frustrating games I've seen in a while. It's not because the Steelers lost a game that they kind of needed for the playoff push, but because it felt like neither team could really pull away. Cleveland dominated this game for the majority of the time, yet it never showed on the score sheet. Pittsburgh, they just couldn't get on there. The offense is all the consistency and dependability of warm two-year-old milk. Nothing but chunks of shit on top of more shit. I thought Mason Rudolph had a shot at being a starting QB in this league. Thanks to this game, I am having severe doubts about that. The offensive line couldn't handle the blitz packages or speed of Cleveland's defense. You expected playmakers? They're all injured. Down to three wide receivers, it felt like a preseason game. Just awful, awful stuff to give Cleveland life in their season. Nothing but head bashing to where I think I gave myself a concussion. At least that dreaded false hope has been shed from my system. It's now property of the Browns. On second thought, Cleveland shouldn't have hope because the Browns will ruin it before it even sprouts from the ground. The game had been won. The Steelers are humiliated. There is nothing to prove in these final moments. That is unless you're Miles Garrett. Please explain, Miles. Why the fuck would you take Mason Rudolph's helmet off and fucking hit him with it? A dude that had just come off of a severe concussion. When the NFL is looking for anything to throw the book at and you do that? There's no justification of this. None! Argue with me about how Mason started in and was acting like a bitch that doesn't give permission for that recklessness. It's a huge black eye not only for both teams, but the league itself. They acted accordingly. Miles Garrett has been indefinitely suspended. He will not return this season. Marquise Pouncey laid some whoop-ass on Garrett on the ground. He's been suspended three games. Larry Ogunjobi pushed Mason down after the hit. He's out for a game. Both teams find a quarter of a million dollars. This bullshit is going to follow Garrett wherever he goes. He won't live it down. It's an act that even Vontez wants nothing to do with. What the hell kind of operation are you running, Freddy? Miles Garrett showed none of this behavior in the past, yet he turns into football's Marty McSorley? When Todd Haley is calling you out for it, it may be the truth. The Browns somehow lose even when they win. Shocking. You know what time it is. Cue the round ball rock. Behold the tank bowl that time itself forgot. A battle not for Burrow or Tua, but for Chase Young. The NCAA might be a joke in regards to its student athletes, but the true punishment will come in being drafted to one of these moribund franchises. Today we speak four words that will soothe the souls on the DC Metro. Hail to the Deadskins. They are as trash on the field as they are in the executive branch. The Jets have no interest in tanking, for their main interests are in pretending their head coach isn't a divisive egomaniac and having players go public with their gripes about alleged incompetence in the organization. The Redskins are somehow on a worse hole than this. Dwayne Haskins is fucked. He is literally fucked. He pleads for his offensive line to tell him what he can do better, but it falls on deaf ears. I know something else that might, though. Sorry kids, Dan can't hear you from his luxury suite while swelling beer as shitty as his team is. Oh yeah, Tua, um, the team stanking for him have some stark news to swallow. He suffered a devastating hip injury. Considering Tagovailoa apparently means made of glass in scout speak, this is awful for his professional prospects. Even worse, it was completely unnecessary. Why the hell is Alabama passing the ball when they're up by 28 before halftime? Because you want to give him two minute drill practice? Can't you get a near equal experience against your first team defense in practice? You save both your QB's hips and your national championship ambitions. We must now change objectives. May everyone now bust for Burrow with great haste. Someone's probably still drafting two in the first round. Hype machines never die. Atlanta, you have my sincere condolences. What the Falcons are doing now is the worst case scenario for your team. You had the feeling it was going to happen. After an awful skid which all but takes them out of the playoffs, they rattle off a winning streak which does nothing but delude people. I can already see Arthur Blank pretending his team isn't a decaying landfill and still relevant in the football landscape. Marching into Carolina and straight up shit stomping the Panthers will fool anyone. You took their dwindling dreams of postseason ambitions and long term hope and set it on fire. This happened right in front of them as they are decapitated on the field in front of their family. Cal Allen will make bad reads and endless interceptions in honor of this massacre. Prepare yourselves for the agony of 6 and 10, Falcons. Here comes the part where everyone pretends that the Buffalo Bills offense is alive. Josh Allen did things, you guys! Even Steven Hauschka was an awful! Bills Mafia will celebrate this fine accomplishment and think they have recovered from that ugly loss in Cleveland. Here's the asterisk. You are playing the Miami Dolphins. 
Good job, you aren't absolutely awful. It was like playing a college team, so that could explain why Alan was much more in his element. I won't bitch at you that much since a win's a win, but this does nothing for me. The schedule for them gets a good bit tougher from this point on, but barring a collapse, they should make the playoffs. Don't even think about it, Bills. I expected a game from this one. What we got was a massacre. The Texans walked into a booby trap. They were cordially invited to a delicious dinner at Jimmy's Seafood only for the waiting staff to open fire on their table. They were undercover Ravens. This is the closest comparison I can make to this kind of performance because it felt like I watched two different teams. One looked nigh unstoppable. The other was roadkill before they hit the ground. It's at least great to see Lamar Jackson continue to evolve and blossom into a dynamic weapon every week. Now this offense can continue to reach their full potential. At least something is unlike pass interference challenges. Why even have them when they rarely get overturned? This blatant penalty that should have been called was in the first half a potentially game-changing moment. Some progress we're having. The Colts were utterly embarrassed last week by the team that shall not be named. In order to maintain pace in the wildcard race, they must rattle off a few more wins against competitions such as the Jaguars. They have a secret weapon today. The return of Big Dick Nick. I don't get the fancy effects today. No budget. What the hell am I spending the MyBookie money on? At least my frivolous investments give me a better return than Saxonville's defense did. You remember how hyped they were for like a year? You better because they're getting gashed by most teams they face nowadays. Marlon Mack, Jonathan Williams, do you like eating delicious yardage? Have all that you desire against this defense. Jacksonville, in comparison, had 29 rushing yards total. I think that tells most of the story. Poor Nick Foles deserved more support for the game he had, but now the Jags fall into a brutally dark hole. One more slip up and they're all but finished. Tampa Bay is another team that is clinging on to dear life. After last week's last minute win against Arizona, they'll have a bit of a tougher task of winning against the Saints. To counter Drew Brees, Jameis Winston will hopefully not force the turnovers. O.J. Howard will volunteer in his stead. It will at least get some heat away from that, well, what people apparently call a defense. Everyone knows there is no defending. There is only flailing at everything and praying something hits. Drew Brees calmly leads the Saints to a win as Jameis gets desperate and forces the ball everywhere. Two rather predictable results. Another year of this long postseason drought is all but certain. Bruce Arians will defend it as progress or some shit. You know you need this win, Motown. I know you do. Here's the problem. Everything. Matt Stafford's injury is looking more severe than most deluded fans had hoped, so we go back to the Driscoll well once again. I lied, everything isn't the problem. Driscoll led the offense decently. They managed to have sustainable production against a Cowboys team that's also desperate. Here's where the good ends. You know that defense the Lions kept typing up till Kingdom come before the year? It's fucking horrible. Dak Prescott barely had to flinch as he racked up yardage at will against these sad bums. With how awful they've been, the offense would have to be near perfect to win games. I don't know if the Lions could even do that with Stafford. Thus, it's never enough and Detroit suffers yet another death blow. Doctors are saying it's roughly a six-week injury for Stafford? You boys are done. Who the hell has this been, Denver? Charging headfirst into Minnesota and beating the ever-loving shit out of them this quickly? Look at all the Vikings are self-destructing in front of our very eyes. Careless errors are plenty allowing the Broncos to coast out to a stunning 20-point lead at halftime. The defense is imposing. Brandon Allen is slinging. Things are looking good. I'm impressed. You'd think it'd be over here, right? Well, no, the Vikings weren't done. They had just been punched right in the mouth against a team they should be beating the shit out of. It's in logic that Minnesota would finally come to life as if Denver had just awoken a sleeping giant. Commence the bombing raids. Dalvin Cook doing his thing. Kirk Cousins doing his. The Bronco magic turned to dust since they ran out of medicinal weed. Perhaps instead of being complacent, you won't give up 20 points in the fourth quarter. Maybe it won't force Denver to push with an offense that couldn't do shit throughout the second half. To the continued shock of many, they charged to the goal line. This is their chance at stealing away the win they had firmly in their grasp. It worked out as well as Vikings fans hoped. They whiff on three straight passing plays. Welcome to the funny pages, Broncos. Who knew that blowing huge leads could be so hilarious? <laughs> Ain't that right, Baylor? You blew it. You blew it. This is the closest thing to a free win on anyone's schedule at this point in time. A hot date with the Bungles. They were a woman, they're the incredibly easy one that is willing to do anything in the bedroom. It's both intriguing and sad at the same time. The Raiders didn't do shit for most of the first half, but Cincinnati didn't care. They had their touchdown and apparently were content with it. Oakland barely lifted a finger and still somehow won with E. It's the joy of the Bungles, at least for the rest of us. Their reward though, the first team eliminated. I figured the Dolphins would be the first team to go. Probably the most surprising thing to happen all year. Philly can only hope this is a rematch of Super Bowl 52. The mighty Patriots are upended by the ultimate underdog and the Eagles to bring hope back to their jaded citizens. 
There's even the message that the secondary was solid and prevented New England from gaining any true traction on offense. Philly's offense never got this needed telegram. They were just as lifeless as their opponent. Even for their strong effort, the Eagles couldn't hold up for long. You can't just score 10 points against a team like New England and expect to win. Doesn't matter if the only way they can score a touchdown is with a gimmick. When everything stalls out, there is only death. Endless punting for drive after drive. Except for one, their final push. Carson Wentz was erratic and his receivers can't catch, but they're at least piecing things together to give them a chance. Here they come. Off his back foot, he heaves it. Over the inside, and all the fingertips. You might have the season in the balance and you trust it to Aguilar? People are supposed to feel bad for this? Some teams deserve to lose. Well, this was unexpected. One of the best teams in the NFL getting exposed early on by a team still trying to find itself in the Cardinals. You'd think it was the other way around earlier on, what with the 16 points Arizona put up before San Fran even considered entering the red zone. Things turn out okay, Niners. You put up 17 in return to make this more of a game. Thus, the duel will begin. In many circumstances, San Francisco would run away with ease, but Jimmy Garoppolo was inspired by famous Jameis in the red zone. Arizona kept it close since the Niners were unable to adjust to their offense. With time ticking down and possible humiliation waiting in the wings, perhaps they can get a bailout. Garoppolo's throw is caught by Jeff Wilson! He's gonna score a touchdown for the 49ers! Thank Vance Joseph for the all-out blitz. Who the hell knew that a slot receiver could run an underneath route? Please escape stage left with a division lead. And do it quietly. Live from Los Angeles, we bring you footage of quite possibly one of the worst played football games in recent memory. Two formerly hyped teams with Super Bowl ambitions before the year in a contest of mediocrity. If only it were that. If your hobbies are things like missed field goals, fumbles, interceptions, three and outs, and the occasional defensive lapse, then you're in luck. You'd think for two teams that need this win to fuel their hopes, there would be more urgency, you know? The Rams can thank the gods that their opponent can't do anything with the football unless it involves punting. Who does Chicago blame for being terrible this week? The offensive line? Matt Nagy? Kissin' titties? Cody Parkey? If I'm that defense, I want heads on pikes outside of the locker room. How long will they be laid out to rot for that awful offense? Now Trubisky may be out with a hip injury that may or may not be real? Is that good or bad at this point? South of the border, a crucial matchup for the Chargers is taking place in Estadio Azteca. As odd as it seems, this game is must-win for them. One more loss may all but take them out of the playoff picture entirely. This would be easier, well, if this weren't the Chargers. It feels like every game plays out the same for them this year. Every single goddamn one. It's a script full of holes ironically like the field of play. The Chargers start out incredibly sloppy, make a bunch of unforced errors, Phillip Rivers gets over-aggressive with the football. Their defense may or may not be stout, but it won't stop their opponents from getting out to a rather sizable lead in the third quarter. Then, unsurprisingly, the Chargers realize that they have talent and start to execute better against their opponents. The running game will come alive, the passing game starts to click, they pad stats by means of accruing tons of yardage. They'll even come back and make the final quarter nerve-wracking for their opponents. But it doesn't matter. Nearly every single time, the Chargers will find a way to fuck it up. It may be by more turnovers, it could be because Rivers is starting to decline, it might just be too little too late, but they always let victory fall to the ground and shatter into a million pieces. Today's scapegoat is, yes, Philip Rivers. Please be more over-aggressive with your passes, Phil. It may be 2007 in your mind, but your body says otherwise. Have another interception. More painfully, there's even a chance for redemption since the 40th pass downfield finally hit. Rivers could ironically save them for all his damage. Tries that under move. Rivers steps up to the end zone. Oh, no! That pass also resembled their season. Poorly executed and all but done. Jimmy, I'd prepare the gun again if I were you. The gods always demand sacrifice. Let us lament those we have lost this week. Unit lost. 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 May the fallen be blessed in the football afterlife. Amen. Murray will throw to Fitzgerald, who will pitch it back. At the 25. Scramble for it. <laughs> Ball comes out of there. It's a rugby event. <laughs> Is that 49ers? DJ Reed takes it into the end zone.